really excited to be here at this year's 10th anniversary Grimfest with our special guest Barbara Crampton. Thank you so much for joining us this year. We're Thank really you. excited to have you with us. Oh, happy to be here. We're screening three of your movies this year. Um, we're kicking off with Reanimator, which is a classic movie that many horror fans will obviously know. Um, about two years ago, we had um, Brian Yuzen, the producer of the right. movie, come over and spend some time with us, which is awesome. Um, but um, could you tell us a little bit about how you feel about the, I mean, Reanimator just seems to continue, grow and grow, and its popularity seems to continue year in, year out. I think it's the movie that gave me my career, really. And at the time that it came out, it was kind of funny because we got some really good reviews from a lot of people, and I know it won best film at Sitges Film Festival that when year. It, when it came out? In 1985, wow. yeah. And Roger Ebert, who's quite famous you know, in America, gave it a very good review, and yeah. Pauline Kael, the New Yorker gave it a great review. But you know, my agents and other people were like, oh, it's a horror film, no big deal, you know. Eh. And I think for a long time, I don't think that it helped me in my career or my life at all. And I was like, but it's a really good movie. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it developed its cult status over time, yes. and there's an appreciation for the movie now that's much more voracious yeah. than when it first came out. Well, that's fantastic, though, isn't it? This popularity continues to grow. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and also, we're screening um, a couple of new movies you're in. And I mean, it's really interesting and exciting to see how your career has kind of taken off. I mean, over the last few years, I felt like I've maybe... I've been discovered. <laughs> rediscovered. All of a sudden. Rediscovered. Oh, rediscovered. OK, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did you take a break from acting or, or...? Well, yeah, I did. I mean, in some respects, I had children and I got married, and so I was kind of busy with them. But at the time, I was about 37, 38, and I had been feeling for a couple of years that I wasn't really getting the roles that I wanted to get, and I wasn't even getting auditions. And I thought, oh, well, it's the old cliche of, you mm. know, uh, put the mare out to pasture because she's too old. <laughs> um, Anyway, uh, since coming back with a movie a couple of years ago called You're Next, of course, yes. You now I'm getting those older matriarchal roles, um, much more complicated, much more interesting roles, actually, mm. in my view, than I had collectively when I was younger. Yeah. Although I feel like in the film From Beyond, I, I, you know, that was a great gift to me, and I got to do a lot in that film. But um, I feel like the roles that I have now are much more multi-layered and interesting and deep and um, I'm just really grateful to be here talking with you. I mean we've screened over the last few years quite a number of your movies, mm -hmm. um, f films like uh, We Are Still Here um, and also Sun Choke, yeah. which is a great I movie. Love, I love that film so, even though it's so dark. Yeah it is that, very dark but it's film. very cool. Yeah it's pretty cool. I, I remember we when played, I... We re replaced last year as well. Oh you did? Yeah. Oh yeah. That hasn't come out in the United States yet, but it's, it, I, I know it's out it's here, really but it great will be. Yeah, movie. thank you. Very yeah, kind of beautifully, weird and twisted and dark, beautifully shot. Very and, much so, yeah, really dark. Mm. And, you know, both that and Replace are actually really dark movies. Um, there's a little bit of humor in Replace, but when you mentioned Sunchoke, I was going to say it's pretty interesting. There's like no humor in Sunchoke at all. And, it, and it's a pretty, I know this is grim fast, but it's a pretty <laughs> grim movie. Yeah. And um, when they asked me, to do the part, I said, well, is my character a good character or a bad character? Because I couldn't really tell. And the director said to me, let's find out together. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm in. That's so not interesting. Kind of yeah. to discover the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this year we're playing, obviously we're playing Reanimator, but we're all, this year we're also playing um, Dead Knight. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about Dead Night. This is a really interesting film, and I feel like it covers a whole load of kind of horror concepts in, in one movie, in a way. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very ambitious film, and it's a double narrative mm. of a family going out to a cabin in the woods and what happens to them, and there's what you see in what happens to them, and then there's a true crime reality TV show That's that right. talks about yeah. what they think happened because you're never really sure unless you're there what happens right it touches on black magic and it touches on yes you know, demons and yes you know. so so there's a double narrative but then it touches on a lot of other things as mm. you're saying um and i'm a political candidate as well yes so there's a lot of things going on in that movie when i first read it and I, a great cast i, I loved it yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bria Grant and A.J. Bowen, who I've worked with both of them before, and I really love them, Chase Williamson, 
um, Daniel Roebuck, which he's been around forever, mm -hmm. and I know him, and he's a friend. So a lot of people uh, connected with the film I knew, and Don Coscarelli, of course, was uh, our main producer on the movie. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. so I kind so of... So Don Coscarelli, like, obviously, is very well known for Phantasm movies right. and for a movie that we, play, we played a couple of years ago called John Dies at the End, which he directed, which is a, a Beautiful. awesome film. Yeah, and actually, the guy who produced that movie is the director of our movie, Dead Night. Ah, right, yeah. right, okay. So that's fun. Yeah. So it sounds like you had a lot of fun working on that one. Oh, I can't even tell you. I mean... The thing is, um, everybody, you know, connected with the movie on the production side has has other day jobs. So we shot like two weeks and then... Oh, really? So you had gaps between... Gaps and then we would go back and shoot on a weekend. And then three weeks later, we'd shoot something else. And then three months later, we'd go back wow. to the original location. And That's we hard. were... We shot the movie for about a year. That's a hard way to shoot a film, tricky. Yeah, I and mean, we had to keep cutting our hair. Continuity, and, like, yeah. yeah. We and wore a lot of wigs too. I wore wigs. Oh, really? <laughs> for a certain time, I was like, my hair's not quite right, so they gave me a wig. Okay. And yeah, anyway, that's another whole subplot <laughs> of what we're talking about. Yeah. So we're also screening a movie called Puppet Master The Littlest Reich, oh. which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your involvement in that movie? Well, I was in the very first one, Puppet Master, of course, yeah. uh, with Charles Band, and um, I, I, I had become friends with Dallas Sonia, who's the producer in the movie. He also produced Bone Tomahawk yes. and Brawl in Cell Block 99, yeah. and I had met him at a few film festivals, and he got the rights from Charlie Band to do like a parallel universe to the Puppet Master franchise if you will, and so this is the first one. We'll see if it goes on, but anyway, he said- And it's said, also written by S. Craig Zahler, who directed oh, yeah, exactly. those movies that you just mentioned. Uh, uh, Tomahawk yes, and, he and, did, and, and, and he wrote Brawl both of Sobel them. Yes, and he wrote um, the Puppet Master movie, but he didn't direct this yes. one. And so Dallas thought, well, it might be fun to have Barbara come back and just play a role in the new Puppet Master universe. You know, that's a little bit different from the first one that she had and mm. so I'm sort of the Greek chorus of the movie and I espouse on what has happened before and what's going of on course, and yes, I, yes. I sort of you know because at the beginning of the movie you, 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 you're kind of you're showing people around this kind of museum house which yes. it, and explains a lot of the backstory to what happens and then you get deeply involved in the whole kind of crazy Correct. carry on that happens after that yes I I was a I I was a security guard at one time, and now you know I'm a tour guide. So, yes. you know, I, I give a tour yeah. of the of puppet master, and I talk about it. It's super fun. When they gave me the script, I was like, oh darn, it's like a nine-page monologue. Yeah. Okay, thank <laughs> yes, God they tricky. gave me the part like a month in advance, so yeah. I had I had time to learn. But yeah. it's it's it in this iteration of puppet master, the puppets are. Nazis, if you will, yeah, and yeah. Andre Toulon is uh, a Nazi sympathizer. And, um, and that's the, is that the character played by Uda Kia? Yes, yeah. and there's a lot of killing that goes on. And it's really funny as well. They hired, um, I'm trying to think of, uh, Thomas Lennon, who plays uh, the lead in the movie. He's a comedian yeah. in America, yeah. and um, he's also a writer. So uh, it, it, it really hinges on, on him and, you know, his... Uh, relationship with a lot of other people in the movie and so they wanted it to be really bloody and gory and funny at the same time. Which it is, it's always. Yeah, things, yeah. they also hired Nelson Franklin who's a big comedian in uh, in the United States and Charlene Yee and then they hired myself and Michael Pere and a few other people yes. to kind of round out the horror element of mm. it. Yeah. And the directors are two guys that, that we had mm. a movie of theirs a couple of years ago called Wither. Right. They're both, um, kind of, where are they from? They're from, they're Scandinavian, uh, aren't they? Yeah, I think they're from Sweden. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tommy yeah, Wicklund Tommy Wicklund and, and Sonny Laguna. Sonny Laguna. Yeah, they, yeah. they co directed it and they were great. And I mean, Sonny This gave was probably because Wither was a really, really strong, vivid, and very kind of gory movie. Right. And I suppose, yeah. but also very visually stunning. And I guess they were just perfect directors for this film. I think so, yeah. And then coupled with our special effects guy, Tate Steinzik, um, I think it all came together the in a really nice The way. physical effects work in it is fantastic. Yeah. The puppets mm -hmm. and the, the deaths and the gore effects yeah. are very, very strong. Yeah. Very good. But I'm sure it's going to play very well. You need a stiff drink before you watch it. <laughs> you do, you do. Yeah. But it's just my suggestion. It, but it has that really interesting balance between, oh, that's really horrible, to that's actually really funny yes. and it's a kind of interesting balance. 
True, true. Thank you. So listen, I want to thank you so much for being here. I know you're going to be with us at Grimfest over the course of the festival. Uh, and we're kicking off with Reanimator uh, tonight. So, uh, you know, I think it's going to be great. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people that are going to be excited to meet you. Yay. So thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having and me. And thank you guys.